Beautiful. I wish you could see my entire defense shirt. It's okay. Hello, lovers of the world. This is Santa speaking. I love listening to new music. I really push myself every month to find something new to love. It's the beginning of the month, so it's once again time to reflect and rank all the new things that I've listened to in the last month in a tier list. I've also started adding timestamps to when I start talking about a specific album, so you guys can skip to that part if you only want to watch that particular review. If you are a longtime subscriber, maybe you will recognize this tier list. It's the one that I use pretty frequently, but I did change it because I realized I wasn't really happy with the last tier list that I was using, so I kind of modified it a little bit. But essentially, it's still the same, so I'll kind of run through a system with you guys. So the highest tier that we have is called Year End List Material. So this tier is specifically for releases that came out this year. So this is a way for me to keep track of all of the new projects that I've listened to and to remind myself to look back on these releases when it's time for me to construct my favorite releases albums of that year. So only 2023 releases are allowed in this tier because those are the only ones obviously up for consideration. The albums in this tier are those I really like and feel have some longevity. Ideally, I will maybe find one or two albums to put in this tier, but if I can't find anything for that month, then that's just how it is. The second tier is called French Toast, and this is kind of like my own joke for myself, which will make sense further down the list. So all of the albums in this list are perfectly enjoyable. This is basically the highest an album can be placed in if it wasn't released in 2024. So for example, if I like an album and it was released in 1994 or something like that, then I will have to put that in French Toast. However, if the album was released in 2024 and placed in this tier or in the ones below that, they do still have a chance of moving up to Year Endless Material if I end up changing my mind. On the other hand, just because something is in Year Endless Material doesn't mean that it's automatically going to be in my Year End List. That's why it's called Year Endless Material and not Year End List. The one below French Toast, I call Gems Found in the Mine. Uh, these are albums that have very precious and treasured tracks that I really like and stood out to me and have kept in my heavy rotation for a long time. And then that's basically the difference between this tier and the one below it, which I've called the most album ever. And this is basically the middle tier. It's like albums that are perfectly average or albums that I can see the appeal of but were not for me. And these are albums where the listening experience was pleasant enough but overall has no memorable tracks that will kind of remind me that like, oh yeah, this album exists, unlike albums in the Gems Found in the Mind. And then the tier below that is, well, I learned something new. So I'm always down for expanding my horizons. And I do like to stay updated on new releases, but if that album doesn't hit, then it doesn't hit. And then the absolute lowest tier on my list is the eggs you break for your French toast, which is a kind of a play on the phrase, you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And instead of omelette, I'm saying French toast because I like French toast. So the eggs you break for your French toast tier are albums that it's basically a more positive way for me to say that I didn't like it, but at least I gave it a shot. In your search for music that you love, you'll come across music that doesn't resonate with you as much and that's okay. And I don't want to call albums like bad because I feel that when it comes to personal taste, anything that you don't like about an album are all the reasons why somebody else would like that album. Just a disclaimer about this tier, just because I put an album or an EP in this tier doesn't mean that I automatically hate that artist. I'm just grading that particular release, okay? Yeah. I'm trying to be more brutal <laughs> this year because I feel like, especially when I was doing my very late music reviews from 2023, I realized that I feel like I was being really nice on certain things or I feel like I'm not expanding my horizons enough. I'm not putting myself in more uncomfortable situations. And so I kind of want to change that. So another goal or motivation of mine would to fill this tier as much as possible because that means I'm actually becoming more adventurous with my musical picks and not just sticking to the very safe options that I typically go towards. Now that that's out of the way, let's actually get to ranking. First, I listened to Erika Badu's Live. Uh, this was released in 1997. It's a really excellent live performance album. I enjoyed it so much. I'm putting that in French toast because it's such an incredibly unique experience. This one night in 1997 captured and immortalized in a time capsule and can live forever. As a person who really loves live performance and concerts, they are so special because they're so ephemeral or they exist in one point in time and space and then they're 
it's kind of gone forever but this is such an incredible capturing of that it's such an antithesis to mainstream pop albums because you really have to sit down and listen and experience the entire thing these are not just a collection of songs you cannot surgically remove the tracks from all the other elements that's happening in the album. Spoken word segments, these philosophical speeches that bleed into songs, and we hear the audience reactions and cheers with such startling clarity. It's a testament to the beauty of live performance and the miracle of recording technology. The title is obviously live because it's an album of live performances, but it can also be pronounced as live, which plays very well into Erika Badu's speeches and musings in the album itself. And then I listened to Isekai by RJ Passan. This was released in 2023 i actually found that one of his songs on instagram reels instagram reels is becoming such a significant role in finding new music for me so i decided to check out what his other musical projects were it was okay i it's very playful and magical and i assume I'm assuming that this was really inspired by anime show openings and video game OSTs. But ultimately, it's not really for me. So I'm going to put this in the most album ever. The experience of listening to it was fine. But again, it's not really my kind of music. And then I listened to For Real by Crystal K. This was released in 2004. I basically came across this album because of this tweet. So somebody uh, took this clip from... The music video of one of the songs in this album called candy and i was immediately obsessed with this song and i decided to go and listen to the entire album and oh my gosh it is such a good album it's just classic excellent pop music delightful youthful fresh lively and she just has such an incredible voice i really 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 love this album i'm gonna put this in french toast and my favorite tracks are boyfriend candy and not alone I love Boyfriend and Candy. Like, they're just such girl. I love it. When I listen to it, I feel so confident. I really love this album. And then I listened to Roundabout by Tatsuya Kitani. This was released in 2024. I've actually never heard of this artist before. I found this album when I was on Rate Your Music, uh, just looking through the new releases that came out in January. I thought this was a really solid album. Very thrilling and exciting. I'm putting that in French toast. Since I cannot pronounce the Japanese words, I will refer to my favorite songs by the track number. So I really like track number one and track number two. Those are probably my favorites of the entire album. And then I listened to Sensational by Erika de Cassier. This was released in 2021. And the story with this album is that I fell in love with this single that she released called Lucky. And I really loved that song. I was really obsessed with it. So I decided to check her other music assuming that she would have more songs like it so i picked up this album thinking that the musicality would resemble lucky but instead i was surprised to find that it was quite different it leans a lot more into these singer songwriter r&b vibes with very minimal and you can really tell that the point of the album is her voice so i really liked it but not as much as i loved lucky because i really liked that song however what i thought was interesting is that as I listened to the album, I realized that the last three tracks was actually kind of similar or rather hinting at what she would eventually release with Lucky. And so because of that, I would probably put that in Gems Found in the Mine. The three tracks I really liked are Secretly, Busy, and Call Me Anytime. And then I listened to Born to Be by Etsy. This was released in January of 2024. This is their latest album, but one of their members, Leah, isn't actively promoting. It's a big bummer, but I hope she's resting really well. I listened to this album before they announced that they were going on tour. So I actually just bought tickets today, February 5, to their concert happening next month. I'm very, very excited. But I think there is a kind of bittersweetness attached to buying these tickets because my bias over the years has become Leah. And I'm really sad that the first time I'm ever going to see Itzy live, she's not going to be performing with them. But regardless, I hope she's resting really well. And going back to the album, I don't know if it's because Leah is my bias, but I really feel her absence in the group songs which is why I think it was really smart of the company to make the album individual solo songs based because we still have a Leah solo and we have all the other solos from the other members. And even though there are new group songs, I feel like they at least play to the strengths of the members who are active and they are able to make songs that make Leah's absence not as completely overtly obvious. But to me, there's just... I don't know, a space that can't be filled 
in the listening experience. Regardless, I think the album is actually pretty good. I'm putting this in Gems Found in the Mind. Despite this absence, I think they still pull off the album really well. And overall, all the songs exhibit key traits of Itzy, which I think in some way makes up for the fact that Leah isn't here, but not enough for me. Now, it is obviously no surprise when I say that Blossom is easily my favorite track of the album, but a close second is probably Mr. Vampire. I think it is the best display of Itzy's vocals ever, in my opinion, like so far. And the other solos, I think were fine. They were executed well and again, delegated to those who could execute it best. And then I listened to Psychedelic Jungle by The Cramps. This was released in 1981. And you might know this album because it has the song Goo Goo Muck, which kind of became a viral song from the Wednesday TV show on Netflix. I decided to just see what all the fuss is about with this band and I thought this was fine. It's not really for me. I'm gonna put this in the most album ever. It's kind of campy and scary in the same way that Rocky Horror Picture Show was. It's kind of like you're supposed to laugh at the absurdity of fear I think is the point of this album. And then I listened to Good Morning by Yena. This was released in 2024 and the EP basically continues Yena's musical persona, where she has this dual personality of sorts, dark and seductive uh, R&B side with songs like Wicked Love and Love War. And on the other hand, she has this really bright, bubbly and pop punk persona that I personally prefer. And this is an EP that really plays into that. It's very short with only four tracks, so there's not really a lot to sink your teeth into. Out of the four, I really, really like two. So I think that's fair enough to put in Gems Found in the Mind. My favorite songs are Good Morning. It is such a fun, exciting song. If I worked a 9 to 5 job, I could gaslight myself into surviving if I just listened to this every day, every morning. And then the other song I really liked is Ugly Duckling. I just think her vocal performance in this is really compelling. I don't wanna cry. Oh, I'll be alright. Just classic. Classic pop punk emo. <laughs> and then lastly, I listened to FE300, nope, FE304 Break by Edmix. And I really like this. I'm putting this in. Let's be optimistic. I'll put it in your endless material. I think it's fair to be optimistic. So, because I have something good to say about all of the songs in the album. And I feel like that's fair enough evidence to put it in the highest tier. So I really like Dash. I think it's one of their best songs ever. Or at the very least, it's their best title track. It's got these gorgeous harmonies. The girls really deliver them with so much sass and attitude. I think the switch up is the best. I think it's easy to like. It's very interesting and intriguing musically, but it's still pop and general public friendly. So it doesn't necessarily alienate people immediately, unlike their first two songs, Oh Oh and Dice. Run For Roses is another pre-release single that I thought was quite excellent, but isn't really for me. I think, again, they deliver it really, really well. And the violins and this electric guitar bass riff thing going on is very unique and nothing that I've ever heard in K-pop before. So I'm applauding them for these really interesting choices. But again, it's not for me. Sonyar was another pre-release that I didn't get at first listen, but now that I've listened to it in the context of the EP, I definitely understand it a lot more. And again, like the vocal deliveries are really amazing and it's just so interesting and unique compared to what everybody else is doing. But my favorite songs in this album is Passion Fruit. It is so good. It's so delicious, so refreshing, and it makes me, it's so baby girl. I really, 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 really like it. It's my favorite song from them so far. It's just so completely untouchable and how much I really like the song. Boom is also good and XOXO is also really good. So overall, a very good album and yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's it. That's all of the albums and EPs that I listened to this month. Here are the stats for January. Overall, I listened to nine projects in total. Four of them were released in 2024. And here is a pie chart of my listening experience of the year so far. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Comment down below what your favorite recent musical project is. And if you want to see more of my work, you are welcome to subscribe, especially if you don't want to miss my next monthly music review 
in next month. My social media links are down in the description if you want to follow me there, alongside my coffee and Patreon pages if you want to support me financially. Otherwise, I can't wait to share my love with you again next time. I will see you soon. Free yourself and free yourself.